Good morning, everyone. Do I have folks out there that can hear me and see me? Hey, Jeremy. All right. Wonderful. Also, can you see my first slide? Rachel, Jackie, if one of you can answer me. Good morning, Brenda. Diane. Yes, we can see the slides. Wonderful. Is my mama out there anywhere? I invited my mom to this this morning, so I know at least one person's going to love it. <laughs> That's that positive self-talk that we're going to be really focusing on today as well. So welcome everyone. My name is Sharon Ash. I'm a health promotion specialist with CFE Kingston. And today we are going to be talking about mental fitness and specifically mental fitness exercises. So thank you so much for joining me today. I know it's uh, challenging times that we're dealing with and I really appreciate you taking the time and the energy to be here. I often draw people through this element of pretend you're on a plane and you're going to your favorite place that you've ever wanted to go to or that you've ever been. And imagine that you're sitting there and you're going through all those wonderful pre-safety briefings that they do. And they say, in the unlikely incident that we lose cabin pressure, an oxygen mask will fall down. And they tell you that when you're traveling with others to use that mask yourself first. And I really want people to think about that today and in these times. What can you do to look after yourself in the element of being able to help and look after others as well? So I am giving you permission today and every day to do self-care, to do something that you love and enjoy. And now's a perfect time to really implement some of these self-care strategies. So today we will be looking from one of our pillars in health promotion. Health promotion has a variety of pillars. We have four in total. We have social wellness, addiction awareness and prevention, nutritional wellness and injury prevention and active living. So today when we're looking at our mental fitness exercises, those really come out of one of the pillars of social wellness. And looking at social wellness specifically, we have a mental fitness suicide awareness program that's mighty coded for military personnel. And it's really one of our programs that we look at a variety of different ways of looking at leadership, recognizing that each and every one of us are leaders in our own right. Specifically, I have helping me out today, my little mental fitness expert. Hi, Lavna. Thanks for joining us. And specifically, our mission is going to be mindfulness. So taking the journey with me today, as you can see from the, if you haven't been on this platform before, there is a chat section. So you're welcome to chat with each other along there as well. If you see someone's name that you want to connect with, you can use the at their name and that will go directly to them. We'll hold specific questions to the end, but I am going to try and use some of the tools in this platform in order to make it a little bit more dynamic for us. But you may be wondering what other things we're going to be talking about. So let's just look quickly at our agenda, look at a few group guidelines, We'll overview what mental fitness means to you and what it means in the military context, but recognizing as well that this is widespread opportunity. So we can use this in context of what works best for you. We'll be looking at some strategies and offer you some strategies. And of course, it's not just information, but how we're going to apply it. And most people's favorite adult nap time. So we will put some of these into practice and see which ones you are most comfortable with or that you're willing to commit to over the next 10 days. We'll have a little wrap up with Q&A at that time. And then of course I'm welcoming you and I also want to thank you at the end and we'll talk a little bit more about how you can thank yourself. So thanks again, everyone, for being here and for taking the time. There are a few different platforms. So I am going to actually try and send you out right now. Let's see if this works, a poll. And let me see if this can share. So I've put a poll out. If you can see it, hopefully you're able to answer. I see some answers coming in. So I'm just looking for some information. What is your favorite way to cope? So is it exercising? You like to sweat out that stress? 
Is it talking with someone that you trust? Is it going into nature to enjoy peace and quiet? Is it playing an instrument or listening to music? Or do you have something else that you would put as an other there? All right. So we can see here that we have quite a few people that are sort of split between doing exercise or going out into nature. And you may like a few of these different elements as well, um, but just what your favorite way to cope is and finding what some of those coping strategies are and trying to implement them into life. So it's not just knowing the ways that we would refer to cope, but how do we do that every day? I see someone has joined in that has said listening or playing an instrument, which is one of my favorite ways as well. For the two others that we had, let's go back to chat. And if you feel comfortable, what were those two other ways of coping? If it's something that's uh, appropriate, <laughs> maybe to share. So you wanna share? Gardening, yes, Rachel is our gardener and she is going to be providing some additional tools for us in the garden throughout the next couple of weeks. Brenda agrees with that as well. Okay, thanks so much for adding that in. Lisa, going to the beach is my thing, but I don't live in Nova Scotia anymore and Alberta doesn't provide that. So I read, yes, absolutely. Another great one. Thanks for providing some of those others for us. So thanks to as well our national subject matter experts and we do have some key messages from them that i'd like to share from our delivery experts as well just a reminder that this is the property of uh, department of national defense so please don't share the presentation with others for some of the health promotion webinars that we will be offering and we've been offering them all week and we're going to continue to do that we're looking at parental discretion as well. So just be careful if you have smaller folks running around, just be aware that for some of our webinars, hopefully not today, because this is a happy mental fitness day. So hopefully not for today, but just to be aware of that. This is recorded. So if you are sharing just regarding what you're feeling comfortable to share and recognizing that it will be recorded and it will be saved on calfconnection.ca. Of course, we look at confidentiality in the sense that we allow people to share their stories, most certainly, and recognizing that we want to take the knowledge base and be able to share that, but please have confidentiality with others that are sharing the stories at this time. Okay, so I did mention that calfconnection.ca is where these webinars will be hosted. And no matter where you are in the whole country, you can find your health promotion team close to your home. All right, good morning, Chantel. Thanks for joining us. I am in Kingston, so I put the Kingston in there as well, but you can see that at the top, you can select any other CAF community and get connected with your local health promotion team or the variety of PSP teams. Our fitness staff are really putting out some amazing videos as well. So if you've been sitting mostly on the couch watching Netflix, no judgment, of course, but recognize that uh, we are doing all that we can to provide support to you during these challenging times. Okay, so I have another little thing that I'm going to try and share right now. So this is going to be our activity page. And with our activity page, I call it mental fitness magic. So <laughs> that will be able to be downloaded for you. It's just um, perhaps something you can download right now. I see clicks are happening, so that's great. And this is something that we're just going to walk through and work through, trying to make this a little bit more of a tool that you can carry with you once we leave today. So I am certainly one of those people that gets very excited every time I go to a conference and I always think, yes, I'm going to do that as soon as I get home and I do it for three or four days. And then unless I plan for it or add it into my daily schedule, it sort of goes by the wayside. I think that's natural, I think it's normal, and we're here just to acknowledge the things that we have individual control over. And one of those ways is really being helpful is to create a plan. So we're gonna walk through a little bit, a bit of this plan today. And at another time, you can also do it with your friends or family, you can do it on your own, you can put it on your fridge. Uh, Louise is saying likewise, yeah, at Chantel, yes, wonderful. 
and we're really going to look at the activities that we can incorporate into our course today. So this is what mine looks like when it's all filled out and that may give you a little bit of an idea. Um, what we're going to really focus on today is starting off with our happy place. We'll be looking at tactical breathing exercises. I'll introduce you into the mental health continuum model. We'll do a little bit of thinking around some of the ways starting from today that we can increase our own mental fitness. With our blueprint, we're going to actually start off just getting us all on the same page. And we're going to start by finding what your happy place is. So we had Lisa that mentioned about going to the beach and now that she's in Alberta, of course, the beach isn't as accessible there, but Lisa, you can still go to the beach in your mind. I'm sure when you close your eyes, you can still picture what that beach looks like. You can still smell the salty sea air. You can hear the waves and you probably feel that relaxation when you think of something that brings you joy. So I'm going to ask everyone to close your eyes if you feel comfortable or just sit and gaze. And I want you to think where your happy place is. Now your happy place can be somewhere you've been. It can be somewhere that you would like to go. It can be completely made up. Doesn't even need to be a real place. It could be somewhere quiet, like the top of a mountain or in a cabin in the forest. It could be somewhere loud and exciting, like your favorite band with your favorite friends and family, your favorite music. Maybe it's with your pets, reading a book. If your eyes are closed and on the back of your eyelids, think of this as a movie screen. Let your mind project that happy place. We're going to start to add some color into it. We can add our senses. What do you hear? If it's sitting around dinner with all your favorite friends, maybe it's smelling the delicious vegetables. For Rachel in her garden and Brenda as well that loves gardening, maybe you can smell the flowers, hear the birds chirping, fresh cut grass. All right, thank you for painting that picture with me. And as we continue to work through our little activity form, you can see that that would go in the scroll, your happy place. It could be words, it could be pictures, it could be feelings, thoughts, sensations, any of those things. And feel free to place it into that area once you print it out or just even think about it. This is something really great that you can do right now with your kids at home as well. It's sort of like creating their own storybook, right? It can be as much fantasy as they want and it also helps to calm down our nervous system when we can draw attention to those senses. The happy place is also something that's really wonderful because we take it with us wherever we go. No one can take that happy place away from us. There's a lot of stress right now in our world and it's certainly outside of us, but what we do have is that internal happy place, that internal moment where we can escape in a healthy way to build our brain and to bring our brain and our body together into that relaxation. So what is mental fitness? If you were trying to describe a behavior, how mentally fit people look, or when you are mentally fit, how do you act? Let's go back to the chat and see if there's any ideas. 
what would you say for you is mental fitness? How would you express being mentally fit? What are behaviors that you would see or that you exemplify? And if anyone has any thoughts around that, feel free to add it into our chat. Feeling good in my skin, what a wonderful one. Yes, absolutely, that really, Diane, hits home when we think about that happy place as well. Feeling good with our thoughts, feeling good and confident, Jackie has mentioned here. Enjoying the small things, yeah, Rachel, absolutely. I think we're really having an opportunity right now to really enjoy those small things and the small things have become big things like toilet paper if you're in Canada. <laughs> So some real challenges right now, being present. Yeah, we often really don't stop to think about having that glass half full. Yes, I love these. It's wonderful. Look at grounding, being positive. And it's not often that we really sit and we think about what mental fitness means to us um, or recognizing what that looks like positive side of things, balance. Yes, these are all wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. We really look at, especially in the military context, of having a strong physical body. And we do that with PT. We strengthen our body in a variety of different manners, looking at going for runs or actually strength training. And how often do we really look at strengthening our mind? Mental fitness is really training your brain. It's doing things as prevention so that we're able to handle the challenging times, specifically one that we're in right now. And it's to be psychologically and emotionally resilient. And those are two tools that really help us to spring back. Most of us will be struggling at this time. There's a lot of changes. We may be concerned about parents or friends, but simply going to the grocery store, which you know a couple short weeks ago wasn't something that would bring anxiety. And now we are struggling and it is stressful. And we want to look at how we can move forward. What are the positive elements of this? What is a way that we can grow and develop? What is going to be something that soothes our mind at the end of the day? And when you look at mental fitness, part of that is really not only having those tools, but applying those tools. And part of the application process is not to be bulletproof. Mental fitness does not mean that we are perfect. Mental fitness is learning techniques and helping, helping to move us through those challenges individually and together. So the mental fitness continuum model, I'm sure for many of us in the chat that this looks very familiar. It is certainly a tool that we use. It was adopted from the US Marine Corps and you're seeing a lot more of this tool utilized in a variety of different ways now, looking at addiction-free living, also looking at stress management, recognizing how the mental health continuum model can be applied. So if you haven't seen this model before, you'll notice that we have four key areas at the top or titles. So we have that green, which is healthy. We move towards the right, which looks at reacting, which is yellow. And then we have our orange and our red as well. So when we're looking at this mental fitness continuum model, you will probably recognize that it has this arrow going right and going left. The goal of the mental health continuum model is to look at behaviors. So this is not a diagnostic tool, it's not a clinical tool. It is something that you can look at specifically today for yourself. So when we're looking at healthy, reacting, injured, or ill, we start to recognize the behaviors that are connected to this. And what I really want you to choose and take from this mental health continuum model is that element of hope. So most people will be in the healthy or the reacting, but there could be others in the injured and the ill. And it takes a different amount and different types of resources in order to help us move, if we have been going towards the right, back towards the left, back towards the healthy. 
It is done in six specific categories. So we go across the top, we read it from left to right. So if we look at the first layer, the first column of healthy, normal mood fluctuations, taking things in stride, being calm. Once we get towards that yellow, we may be a little bit more impatient, maybe feel a little bit more overwhelmed, maybe a bit irritable. We could get into that orange where there's a little bit more sadness, almost that hopelessness, or into the ill, which is more panic and outbursts. This again is just a snapshot in time. Regardless of where we are, there are tools to help and support everyone. I am going to give you some resources at the end of our mental fitness exercises today in order to help you. When we look at this a little bit more deeply, and you'll see that in the top left-hand corner, this does reflect back on our really fun little tool here. And it has our mental health continuum model. And what we can look at are changes. So the goal is to understand how you look in the healthy so that you can quickly prevent moving into the reacting. Or if you notice yourself in the reacting, what can you do to move back to healthy? So I asked you earlier what you do for your coping. And that could be something that if you notice yourself reacting, make certain that you're doing those coping strategies. So most of us in that reacting can utilize our own internal resources in order to move us back to the green. Once we slip further into the yellow, deep yellow, orange, into the red, that's where we really need additional help and support. That's where we can reach out to a mental health professional someone a little bit more clinical and really get that appointment and have an opportunity to provide guidance and help into getting back into the yellow and then into the green. But no matter what, we can all move back towards that left side. For yourself, I want you to think, what are your indicators? What are the first things that, again, no judgment, but that you notice about yourself when you are under stress. So maybe it's a change in mood, going from that calm to a little bit more irritable. Maybe the first thing you notice is a change in your attitude, right? A little bit more sarcasm starts to slip in there. Maybe it's a change in sleep patterns or perhaps change in energy. Maybe you don't feel as much as being social or physical. And then the last that portion that we have are change in substance use. So again, just to be aware um, of recognizing where you would fit in there. So we see that irritated easily, bad attitude. Yeah, I really think of myself um, being a little bit irritable as well, right? When I'm in that reacting and just things just feel a little bit more challenging, a little bit more difficult recognizing maybe tension, yeah, easily irritated, poor quality of sleep, change in sleep. So Cindy, that's exactly it. We wanna look for those changes. And we don't know when we've changed if we don't have a clear indication of how we look when we're in the green. So on your worksheet, there are two questions. One is how do you look in the green? So we, can fairly easily see ourselves in that reacting, change in sleep, less talkative, less engaged, change in activity. Absolutely. So those are things that we want to be aware of. How do you look in the healthy? So let's add some of those into the chat as well. How do people feel in the green? Things are good, they're in the flow. What would be some things out of that healthy section that you see? Yeah, absolutely. More energy, feel supportive, able to help others. This is where that oxygen tank comes back. So we started off the, this morning really looking at that oxygen. And when you're in the reacting, those coping strategies are your oxygen. They're the things that bring you back to the green so that you are happy, that you feel more social, well-rested, clear-minded, supportive, energy, getting things done, being social, productive. Like, aren't those all amazing things to be? But we don't always have to be 
pure perfection, right? We can also allow ourselves to have that opportunity to recognize, to rest, see ourselves in the reacting and bring ourselves back into that healthy. So thank you so much for sharing what those behaviors look like to you, have an understanding of that, and then it's also on your worksheet. So we look at how we can more often be in the green. And we look at building that resiliency. And remember we said that resiliency is the bouncing back. It is that aspect of no, things aren't always going to be perfect. Things aren't always going to be great. We're experiencing that history right now. We're going to be a part of this. And wouldn't it be great if our part in it is looking at how we can care for ourselves and others, being kind, finding energy, all of those green things, helping people, getting things done, finding ways to be social that are safe. So we look at building resiliency, taking care of yourself. So we look at sleep and nutrition, stress and distress. Now health promotion in our webinars have been adding some really great information around this building resiliency. So if you haven't had a chance to check them out, please feel free to go to calfconnection.ca and find some other elements around stress management, sleep. We have another mental fitness this afternoon as well. They're offered in both official languages. So please take the time to look after yourself and gather that oxygen. We look at staying connected. So of course, this has very much changed. I am certainly missing my connections. I'm missing my Tuesday night guitar team. I am missing my work friends as well. And I'm absolutely missing teaching and having that opportunity to share my knowledge and support other people. So this is difficult times, but there are ways that we can work together to manage. Being proactive, asking for help, and also looking at practicing mental fitness exercises. So that's really what we're going to be focusing a little bit more on and we're going to get into that and have a little practice session in just a few moments. Let's take another poll here because the first one was so much fun. And can't see to get into the polls. Okay, so let's go back to chat. And without that poll right now, just answering one, two, three, or four in the chat, building resiliency for you. Where do you think is your strength? Is it in taking care of yourself? Are you stronger at staying connected with others? So you would answer two there. Is it being proactive? Answering three. Diane has one, looking after yourself. Rachel, great, staying connected. Lots of ones in there. Jeremy, Don, we have a three. All right, asking for help. That's great, Orsolia. Amazing. Okay, so I really want this to be something that you're proud of yourself for. So if you can, give yourself that nice little pat on the back. What we really want to look for right now is continuing to build that resiliency. So choosing something that you're really good at, recognizing that and maintaining that, and then offering, and I'm really happy to see, um, that people aren't as strong as those at that practicing mental fitness exercises because that's why we're here today. I love to see that we're taking care of ourselves and that we're staying connected. Those are very, very important. Or Solia had be proactive asking for help. So a little bit more challenging sometimes. That's a wonderful skill to have. And also most of us are helping people. So when someone asks us for help, it feels good to provide that support as well. And then of course, what we're going to practice are mental fitness exercises. So I'm really happy you're here with me. So I introduced Bob the Brain a little bit earlier. This is my uh, favorite little fellow right here, and he wants you to brain train, not brain drain. And so that's Bob's message for today. So he is going to walk us through some of these mental fitness exercises. There are four different ones, and I get asked all the time, what is the best one? So tackle breathing, mindfulness, grounding, positive self-talk. I'm going to tell you at the end, so stay with me, what the best mental fitness exercise is. So don't go anywhere. So let's walk through these a little bit as well. So let's look at that tactical breathing. 
this I know we can all conquer because we all are breathing right now. So how do we breathe in a proper way that's going to help us really target that relaxation response? So I'm sure most people have heard that we have a stress response, fight, flight. Sometimes you hear freeze and flow added into that as well. And we have an equal and opposite reaction called that relaxation response. And it is tied with our blinking as well as with our breath. So those are two things that are autonomic, but also we have the opportunity. I can ask you right now, take a deep breath and you can easily do that. And I can ask you to blink five times and you can do that as well. But we don't need to think about those things all the time. We breathe naturally and we blink naturally. And so it's really something easy for those of us that aren't as strong at practicing this because it's only four minutes long and it's something that we do, which is breathe. The thing that we need to do though is practice this when we don't need it. Mental fitness exercises are meant to be practiced for that time when we have these stressors. And that is something challenging to really look at that prevention element because often once we're in that stressful situation, we're thinking, oh my gosh, what should I be doing? And we really wanna be at when, when we're calm and relax. Oh, now's a perfect time to practice my visualization or breathing. So tactile breathing is an inhale for a four count, hold for a four count, exhale for a four count, hold that exhale for a four count as well. And as Bruce Lee has said, learn it until you forget it. So I notice with myself right now, all of a sudden my body will just take a nice deep breath in. And then I start to look around and wonder why my body thinks that I'm in a stress response. So it's something that becomes very automated but it comes automated with practice. You don't need to sit in a special spot for this. You don't need to be a yogi. You don't need to have your eyes closed or laying down. This is a four minute practice that you can do standing in line, when you're driving, when your three-year-old's having a tantrum in the store, when your teenager is not listening, uh, any of those elements as well. It's a nice, deep, relaxed breathing. So we do want to breathe down into our belly and we want to think of that breath as filling a balloon on the inhale and deflating a balloon on the exhale. So I'm going to walk you through one minute of this tactile breathing. Normally you do it for four minutes but just to give you an idea, and we will use the four count, but individually you can change that count, it's totally up to you. If you breathe naturally with a five count, as long as the inhalations, the holds, and the exhalations are the same length, you will start to target the relaxation response, which takes a minimum of four minutes. That's why it's four minutes long. So you can sit comfortably, or you can be laying down. Maybe you're just laying down listening to me right now or maybe you're sitting looking at the computer. Again, this is your practice, so do with it as you wish. Let's just focus on nice deep breathing to begin with, visualizing that balloon in the abdominals rising with the inhale and deflating with the exhale. Now the best way to breathe is in and out through the nose, but if that's uncomfortable, then feel free to Breathe in through the mouth or out through the mouth as well. And on your next inhalation, inhaling four, three, two, one, hold four, three, two, one, exhale four, three, two, one, hold four, three, two, one, inhale four, three, two, one, hold four, three, two, one, exhale, four, three, two, one, hold, four, three, two, one, inhale, four, three, two, one, hold, four, three, two, one, exhale, four, three, two, one, hold, four, three, two, one, inhale, four, three, two, one, hold, four, three, two, one, exhale, four, three, two, one, hold, four, three, 
two, and one. Good work, everybody. Again, that is a tool that you can carry with you wherever you go. And we're going to brainstorm a little bit, but one thing that I really encourage people to do if you have a smartwatch is to look at your heart rate pre and post any of these activities and see the one for you that really brings that heart rate down and into harmony. So that is our tactical breathing. The second one that Bob's going to look at with you is mindfulness or situational awareness. It's bringing one's attention to the present, paying attention on purpose, and quite often we are an autopilot. Um, I, I don't really like to broadcast this, but thinking about when you're driving home and you think, oh my gosh, I got home and I don't even remember that last stop sign. It's natural and normal for us to go on autopilot, and there's no problem with that. But when we're looking at training our brain, we really want to look at bringing the mind back. I want to think a little bit about basketball here. So Jeremy is going to love this. When we're looking at basketball, imagine that I brought you to a basketball court. I gave you a basketball. I put you on the free throw line, and you do your best to sink how many baskets you can out of 10. Then I'm gonna give you an amazing program. Actually, Jeremy's gonna give you an amazing program because he would get 10 out of 10. He's visualizing this, but I've also seen him do it in person. And now I'm going to give you this program, send you on your way, practice that basketball this way, this skill for the next three weeks. And when you come back, do you think that it would be better? Yes, of course, you're going to improve if you practice every day. And these things are the exact same. It is practice that helps us to be able to utilize the skills when we need it because it is a skill, just like a physical skill, it's a mental skill. Just like for most of us, we wouldn't run out and um, do a marathon tomorrow, you're also not gonna do a meditation marathon. So start slow and build up, but we do need practice to improve. The best way to start with mindfulness is to think of your happy place. Right, Go there every day for a few minutes in your mind. One of my happy places is Costa Rica. I can't be there physically, but when I close my eyes, I can see myself there. I feel my body relax. I can hear the ocean and the monkeys in the jungle. I can smell the dampness. And it's only a few minutes. And it's not that our mind stops with what we refer to as monkey chatter. But what happens is that we can bring ourselves back to every time our mind wanders, acknowledge it and bring it back to that element of what you were thinking. So practicing that again is going to help improve. Our third one is grounding. And there are a few different ways that we can use grounding. It allows us to reset the brain. And we can do that by using our senses. So the one tool that we use in mental fitness suicide awareness is to look at the five, four, three, two, one. Five things you see, four things you hear, three things you smell, two things you feel, one thing you taste. And when we do this, our brain can no longer run away with those random thoughts and allows us to bring ourselves back. I practiced this actually this morning on my walk with my dog and just thinking of that game I spy with my little eye, right? Something that is blue, naming all those blue things. So this is certainly a practice, a grounding practice that you can use as an adult or with your children as well. And then the last one we look at is that inner voice, that self-talk. And this is really what allows us to have that positive outlook. When we can think positively and talk positively, we can act positively. But it's not always easy because we do have that defense of going into negative thinking. So self-talk is really creating that mantra, the interpretation of the situation, how we can see ourselves as being successful. And I was really thinking about how I manage this and I was using hashtags. 
So I hashtag super Sharon, right? And when my mind starts going to that negative chatter, I think of that element of super Sharon. You can do this, you can handle this. So you can think of a mantra or something that challenges that inner resource or inner voice to really um, answer it like you are talking to your best friend. Be kind to yourself. And that I think is really important when we look at that self-talk because inherently it's generally negative. And so we want to stop thinking um, about that negative and start thinking about that positive. So those are four different things that we're going to get to practice in just a moment here. But Bob would like us to do a little brainstorm. So I want you to think, I've, I've uh, given a, a few different ideas of how we can use tactile breathing, like say in the grocery store, waiting in line, uh, mindfulness, going back to that element of your happy place, grounding, right? The five, four, three, two, one, self-talk. Does anyone use any of these right now to help yourself or can you see where potentially you could? You don't have to share it in the chat. It's just that brainstorming thought. So looking at where you are right now in our lives, because certainly most of us are working from home and it has been a little bit more challenging maybe to find that quiet time or to remember where your happy place was. But thinking of how you can actually take the skill and apply it. Does anyone have any thoughts of how they could utilize one of these skills? And if you feel comfortable, you can add it into our chat. Yes, Lisa, I absolutely agree. I feel very anxious going to the grocery store right now and it has really helped. Diane using that grounding and self-talk a lot, wonderful. Now remember these are skills so when we're seeing people that self-talk, talking it through in your brain, right? Um, allowing yourself that self-talk and looking at that mantra, make sure the mantra is positive. So when we hear that negative self-talk coming in, we immediately, even if we don't believe it, we can train our brain to have the answer. <laughs> yes, Brenda, but do you also answer? How are you gonna get the right answer? It's not yours, Brenda all the time yes absolutely so part of the wrap up that i'm doing today is to thank yourself of course but to look at where you can implement some of these into your daily life right now and including your family can be very helpful so when i was just adding a little bit more of my thought process here i looked at tactile breathing every morning so i use tactile breathing a deep breath deep abdominal breathing as soon as i wake up in the morning and before i go to sleep definitely it's my first thought I breathe deeply, it's four minutes and it sets my day. And I've been doing that for about four months now and I found that it has been extremely beneficial. Imagining my garden. So my happy place <laughs> doesn't look so happy right now, but I know it will in the future and I can imagine that garden. The soil, the birds, the fresh cut grass, my flowers, when my squash start to grow and I'm out there biting into that tomato and how it tastes. As I mentioned earlier, the sort of I spy out in the world today, it's really great to get out and get active and get that fresh air, um, recognizing of course that there's the physical distancing, but looking even at your window, what do you see outside and how does that feel when you focus on your brain on that? And right now, I'm really using that self-talk of this too shall pass and um, that's what's been helping me. So filling that form out, putting it on your fridge or where you see in the mornings, use that tactical breathing somewhere that it's going to be a reminder for you to practice a little bit. Okay, everyone, I hope that we're doing well. We're at the opportunity now to rest and relax. So just before we get into our comfortable position, I did mention about resources. So there certainly are resources that are available to you. Hotline is really great if you're looking at that member assistance program, 
268-268-768-768-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-268-
chest and upper back relaxed. Let the tension flow down hips, thighs, knees, ankles, feet and toes. Tension rolling down and out the body. Body feeling heavy, relaxed, at peace. And any time your mind wanders, just gently bring it back as my voice becomes your voice. As you stand at the top of a long, narrow wooden stairway, looking towards a beautiful, inviting beach. As you step down the wooden stairway, you feel more and more tension rolling off your body. As you gaze outward, you notice how the bright white sand stretches down the shoreline as far as you can see. The ocean is a deep shade of blue with a fine white crest of the waves sweeping towards the shore. You reach the end of the stairway and step down, sinking into the warm, soothing sand. The roaring sounds of the sea surf, the waves crashing over each other, calm your mind, allowing you to feel more and more at ease. You begin walking slowly towards the edge of the water and notice the warm sun on your face and shoulders. The salty smell of the sea air invigorates you and you draw in a deep breath and breathing slowly out, feeling more and more relaxed. Finally, you reach the water's edge and you gladly invite the waves to flow over your toes and ankles. You watch the waves glide smoothly towards you and gently sweeping around your feet in the trail of seawater that flows slowly back out. The cool water feels soft and comforting and you allow yourself to gaze out on the far reaching horizon. Overhead, you notice two seagulls gracefully soaring high above the ocean water, and you can hear their soft cries becoming faint as they glide away. All of these sights Sounds and sensations allow you to let go, feeling more and more relaxed. After a moment, you begin strolling down the beach at the water's edge. You feel a cool, gentle breeze pressing lightly against your back. And with every step, you feel yourself relaxing more and more. As you walk down the beach, you notice the details of sights and sounds around you and the soothing sensation of the sun, the breeze, and the sands below your feet. As you continue your leisurely walk down the beach, you notice a colorful beach chair resting in a nice, peaceful spot where the powdery soft sand lies undisturbed. You approach this comfortable looking beach chair. You sit down, lie back and settle in, drawing in long, deep breaths, breathing slowly out, feeling more and more. Allow your mind a moment here to rest.
Feeling the warmth of the sun on your face and shoulders. Listening to the sound of the sea and the cry of the seagulls overhead. Allow yourself to capture this feeling of rest that you can carry with you. Visualize yourself rising off your beach chair, walking back to the edge of the ocean, knowing that you can return to this chair in your mind's eye at any time, whenever you need a moment of peace and calm. Focusing now on the breath, nice deep inhalations and exhalations. And allow your mind to be aware of any sounds that you hear inside your own room or wherever you're resting. Bringing awareness into your mind's eye, thinking of your own happy place. So the beach is not your place. You can go anywhere that you want in your mind at any time. Thinking of nice, deep breathing. Anytime that you want, you can return to that tactical breathing. Thinking of what you're hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, or feeling allows us back into grounding. And just allow your eyes to slowly begin to open and close, bringing the mind and the body back into the present. So perhaps you have your own picture that you would like to capture and place somewhere that reminds you of your happy place. And I invite you to really utilize the handout that I provided and fill that out and have it somewhere that it is a reminder. Put it into your daily activities, not separate from your activities right now so that it may be something that you incorporate into your walk. Look at tactile breathing, breathing in as you step and holding and out, exhale as you're walking. There's so many things that we can do right now. But the most important thing is thanking yourself for taking the time to be here, looking at your own self-care and what you can do, looking at your own oxygen mask, because you need permission to put that oxygen mask on first, to notice when you're slipping into the yellow, to recognize if you are in that orange or perhaps the red as well, and to seek help and support and to know that we all have that opportunity to practice kindness and kindness starts with you. So thank you so much for joining me everyone today. I will be on a little bit longer or if there are any specific questions or feedback that you would like to provide. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope as well that you will practice as Bob says to train your brain and I hope also to see you at another health promotion webinar. Take good care, everyone. Look after yourselves. Look after each other. Bye now. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask them. <laughs> Thanks, Alana. Yes, for sure. Thanks so much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take good care. I wish I could have seen you too, Brenda. I hope you're doing a webinar soon so that we can participate in one of yours as well. Thanks to my health promotion Kingston team. So great to see you. Thanks, Lavna. Take care, everyone.